thank you very much. I give you the floor. Today, I want to emphasize an urgent problem, which is missing doctors, which is necessary. Oh, oh, sorry. I want to emphasize the urgent need for universal health care, which is a, a global goal of accessible and affordable health care to all. However, there's a big problem, which is missing health care professionals, and that's even more drastic in low-income settings. And, there's addition, addition, addition. and there is artificial intelligence for health. And this technology has gained a significant uh, attention in science and business. So, what happened here? So, we have been working in the focus group on artificial intelligence for health that has been created by ITU and WHO five, year, five years ago here at the Global uh, AI for Good Summit. And we have been working with a team of diverse people together to work on certifi certifying AI for health. We have been working um, with a team from all around the world and Botner Foundation helped us to actually um, uh, make our team even more diverse. The global initiative, which we will now hear about, uh, is based on the work that this great team has been doing in the past. So, what have we done? Well, we, s we have created an open code initiative where we enable people around the world to create AI for health. We have developed specifications for data centers where we have the chance to, where everybody can basically take them and install them, and they are compatible for federated annotation, learning, testing. We have then worked on trust in AI, which is a big, big topic, in particular in the health sector, where we have actually been working on a, a, an ethics specification that was published by WHO, a specification on regulatory considerations, a specific specification on clinical evaluation, so that when you introduce your AI for health into the system, into the health system, you are actually uh, uh, can follow our checklists, our processes to do this right. So, we have then uh, worked together with 24 groups on AI for health topics. And uh, with those groups together, uh, we have further improved our specifications. We have, um, um, with, that, with those groups, uh, uh, they, they have come together, they have collected data, they have worked on the AI for Health topic, and they have made it even uh, better. So, to summarize, the global initiative will consist on this part we have been working on, the enable part, where we create processes, procedures, everything in order to um, create trust in AI, to enable people to create AI for health, to introduce it into their country, and to also develop it. We will now work on implementing these things in all those countries, and we will have a facilitation arm where we bring together the people that enable AI, that make it possible, and those that want to implement it in their country. And in conclusion, the challenges we are looking at, they are big, but they are not unbeatable. So please, let's get together, make this work, and bring AI for health to the people who need it. Thank you. Thank you, Thank you very much. And now the ITU Secretary General, Doreen Bogdan-Martin. Well, thank you so much, uh, LJ, and, and good afternoon, everyone. Uh, it's been quite an exciting day, I must say. And Dr. Tedros, um, this morning we had a, a video address by the UN Secretary General, and he made it very clear that he counts on all of us to ensure that AI reaches its full potential. And that's why this is such an incredibly important moment, because launching this initiative 
going from a focus group to a full global initiative on AI for health will absolutely do that. So thanks everyone for being here and thanks to you, Dr. Tedros. This has been a, a long-standing partnership that we have had, ITU and WHO, since 2018. And of course, Thomas, your leadership uh, driving forward the focus group for the past five years and we're excited about the results that we're seeing already today. And of course, Edward, the partnership with WIPO to take this forward is extremely important for all of us. Uh, as we transition from the focus group to the global initiative, I do want to recognize and maybe even say celebrate the huge strides that our colleagues have made in its governance from ethical data acquisition to accessibility and clinical evaluation, as well as technical leaps that we have seen in domain-specific specific fields like radiology, like cardiology, and like dermatology. So we're very excited to see how we can take the data standards and expand and evolve as they're woven into the global initiative's broader objectives. Um, as many of you know, ITU's uh, two strategic objectives, universal connectivity and sustainable digital transformation, are at the core of everything that we do, and that goes beyond laying down the wires and launching satellites to ensuring that the opportunities and the benefits of digital reach everyone, everywhere. So thank you again for being here, and I, with that, I hand back to you, LJ, over to you. Oh, thank you, thank you very much. Next, we have, of course, the Director General of the WHO, Dr. Tedros. Yeah, thank you. Thank you, Moderator, and Secretary General uh, Doreen, and, and Assistant Director General Edward Kuakwa, uh, NAI Focus Group Chair uh, Thomas, uh, dear colleagues and friends. Um, as um, you said, Doreen, I have been here 2018 and I met Sophia. I met her again today. <laughs> and she is upgraded. And um, it feels like you're interacting with a human being. <laughs> yeah, and the way she smiles, and um, I can see the advances already between 2018 and, and, and now. Uh, and uh, kudos. And the other is the, um, just the presentation we had, uh, especially focused on cardiovascular disease. Uh, as the presenter said, it's, it's very important because um, many pr premature deaths uh, happen because of non-communicable diseases, and cardiovascular is the major contributor, and as he had said, 18 million. Um, and these are very important uh, works, and we're very really glad to be associated with you. It's such a great uh, pleasure to, to work with uh, ITU and also now WIPO, uh, Global Health Initiative on AI for Health. Uh, WHO and the International Communications Union first joined together on the subject of art artificial intelligence in 2018. I attended that uh, meeting. And today the family is growing as we're joined by the World Intellectual Property Organization. And together we are stronger, GI, AI, for health. Uh, AI, of course, holds great promise for improving the delivery of health care and medicine and helping countries achieve universal health coverage. AI is already playing a role in diagnosis and clinical care, drug development, disease surveillance, outbreak response, and health systems management. The future of health care is digital. And we must do what we can to promote universal access to these innovations and prevent them from becoming another driver for inequity. For while uh, these new technologies hold great potential, we must be cognizant of governance, ethics, and equity. The potential risks involved in deploying new technologies include an ethical data collection and biases encoded in artificial intelligence. That's why it's so important to work with governments and the private sector to promote equity 
including greater participation from low and middle income countries in research and development around digital health and artificial intelligence. We must uphold robust standards of evidence to help countries invest in effective solutions. WHO, ITU, and WIPO call, call on the AI community to come together and work with the global initiative to harness the power of digital technologies and artificial intelligence to help us to work towards a healthier, safer, and fairer world for all. I thank you, and moderator, back to you. Thank you, thank you very much. And uh, yes, of course. And also we have Assistant DG Global Challenges and Partnerships from WIPO. It is Edward Kwaku. Thank you. Thank you very much. Uh, good afternoon, distinguished delegates, participants, dear Secretary General, dear Director General, and dear, can I call you Thomas? Yes. <laughs> <laughs> so let me start by extending the regrets of my boss. This is the Director General of WIPO. It turns out just this morning, we started at WIPO the annual meeting of our member states. And when the member states are meeting, they are the bosses of the organization. So the director general had to be there. But that's my luck because I get to be with Doreen and Dr. Tedros on stage. <laughs> so let me thank ITU and WHO for associating WIPO with this focus group as chaired by Thomas. And I should also like to thank ITU and WHO for inviting WIPO to co-create this global AI initiative for health. I should say this morning before coming here, I know it's afternoon now, but it feels like morning still for me. I listened to a few of the statements made by our member states at our annual meeting. And almost without exception, they all talked about artificial intelligence, they all talked about global health, and they all talked about intellectual property. And that in itself demonstrates the extent to which these three are important going forward. Now in WIPO, of course, we even pride ourselves in the fact that we probably were at the beginning of this initiative. And I see my colleague Dalila Hamu here, who was instrumental in ensuring that WIPO played a part 2018, you had said. So WIPO is again glad to be associated with this. Of course, the intellectual property system is such that we pay a lot of importance to AI issues and to global health issues. And in particular, when it comes to AI, we've actually had lots of conversations between IP and AI, including on data, on specifically artificial intelligence. In September, the next conversation is on IP and generative technologies. It doesn't get more current than that. So let me simply say again, WIPO is very happy to be associated with this. And going forward, I wish this initiative much success. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you, thank you everyone, and it now gives me great pleasure to announce a ribbon cutting ceremony where some official photographs will be taken. Bring on the ribbon. Ready to cut? Three, two, one, go. Oh, congratulations. Wow. <laughs>
that now concludes the ribbon cutting ceremony. Thank you so much to all of you for taking part. We're incredibly grateful.